Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a really exciting video, uh, basically the culmination of the channel so far because this is the match day results video. So so for this cycle, I was able to match. Uh, match day was on Friday, April 22nd. And so the program I matched with is the University of Cincinnati. So I'm really excited to be able to start my program in the fall. Uh, I had great success applying for my first cycle and applying right out of undergrad to go into genetic counseling without any kind of work experience in a role like a genetic counseling assistant or any other kind of um, actual job after college. So I'm really grateful for that and really excited for that, uh, just to be able to go right into my program and start training. Uh, that of course also means that I'll be able to start making some new types of videos where I can, uh, like I planned from the start, document my graduate school experience uh, in the genetic counseling training program and shed some light onto what that is like as a student because that's another thing that I have not really seen very widely documented on the internet or for anyone to find. So really, really excited about that. Um, and so I wanna give two things, just a breakdown of the kind of application um, details that I had for the different schools and interviews I had, and also go over some of the matching statistics which were just released today. That's why I waited a couple of days to make this video but there are some stats for the match that I'll share to shed some light on how the numbers look. So as some background, I applied to five schools. I applied to Pitt, which has a genetic counseling program. I applied to University of Cincinnati. I applied to Indiana University, Johns Hopkins, and the UT Health, uh, the UT Health program in Houston. So out of those five schools, I was offered an interview at Cincinnati, Indiana, and Houston. So I was not offered an interview at Pitt or at Johns Hopkins, but um, three out of five was still great. I was really grateful to be offered those interviews. And so as a very general timeline, the applications were all due in December for the most part. I think Cincinnati was due at the beginning of January, but uh, I worked a lot over the summer on my applications. And then after getting recommendation letters in the fall and all that, I submitted most of my applications in December. So by the middle of December, they were all done. And then... Um, there was nothing really until February when they started to release interview invitations. So the first one I got was from Cincinnati. They invited me to interview on, I think I got that email on like February 2nd. Uh, then on February 4th, I got one from Indiana. And then on February 10th, I got one from UT Health. So it was really great to get those interviews because that brought, brought to fruition the fact that I'd be able to actually rank and then be participating in the match because until you get the interviews, you can't necessarily rank any schools and participate in the match at all. So that was really exciting. Um, then I had those interviews. Once you get the email, uh, I was able to schedule an interview with the different programs. They give you a portal to do that through. Um, and so those occurred over the span of the very end of February and the other one was at the end of March. So over the next couple of months, I did a lot of prep for the interviews and did those. They were really they went really well. I'll make some more in-depth videos about the interviews and those details later, but this is just about the match for now. So those went great, but then by the end of March, I was done interviewing and still had a month to wait until match day, which was definitely a long wait, but um, that's how that timeline went overall. So the other thing is with the actual match statistics. Um, so a nice trend for the match is that people are continuing to apply more and more so, for instance, in 2018, there were 1,328 applicants, and in this year, there was 2,067 applicants. So, hundreds more people are applying um, over the years as people learn about genetic counseling, which is perfect. That's what you want to have. Um, it does make it more competitive to a certain degree. But So, out of the 2,067 applicants that applied this year, um, there were... 1,065 that participated in the match. So that roughly would equate to the amount of people that got at least one interview because then they're eligible to rank uh, in the match. So 2,067 applicants, about 50%, a little more than 50% of those got at least one interview. And then out of all the interviewees, out of 1,065, um, 547 matched. So 51.4% of the applicants matched this year, or 51.4% of the ranked 
interviewed individuals matched, which is about 25% of the total, um, the total applicants, the total 2067. Uh, there were 54 programs that participated in the match. There were 547 positions offered. So um, there was 100% filling of the positions this year, which is interesting. Um, let's see, the, interestingly, out of matched applicants for this year, 8% of them are male. Um, that's slightly more than the industry split of about 5% uh, from the last data that I've shared on this channel. Uh, there's some other demographic information, it's still predominantly white, but that is definitely beginning to decrease over the past couple of years. Average GPA, uh, the average GPA of matched applicants is 3.61. The average GPA of all applicants is 3.5, and the average GPA of unmatched applicants is 3.46. I didn't take the GRE, so I'm going to skip that because honestly, schools are not really taking that anymore. Like most of them don't need it. Um, state information, undergraduate majors. It's mostly biology, which is not surprising, but it's interesting how many different majors there are. Um, this is an interesting one. The average number of rankings submitted per applicant. So the average number of rankings for a matched applicant is 6.7. I only ranked three schools. Uh, so 6.7 is, is a little higher than I would expect. Uh, for unmatched, they ranked 3.5. So there is a sweet spot. I, when I talked to genetic counselors and just based on my own preferences of schools to apply to, I didn't want to apply to that many schools because I didn't I didn't find enough of them conducive to what I'd want to attend, but I know a lot of people I spoke with, especially when I met some genetic counseling, some other prospective students, they applied to more than I did for certain. So maybe around eight instead of five. So I can see how 6.7 um, for matched applicants seems to be some good data for anyone who's considering applying, maybe apply to more than five schools like I did because I was, my, my number was even below the unmatched applicant number of ranked schools, which is just kind of interesting. There were 547 matched applicants and 518 unmatched. So again, it's a, a roughly 50%, roughly 50% of the applicants get interviews and then roughly 50% of those match, which is, I guess, 25% of the total applicants, about. They offered 547 positions and there were no unfilled positions we talked about that all right that looks like it's pretty much all the data um so yeah that's that's pretty interesting um so yeah that's that's the situation so really excited that i was able to match my cohort i already got to meet some of them uh see some of them in like an email from the program director that that we were sent kind of shows a roster and where everyone's from we have a really diverse group of people in terms of, um, you know, demographic, background, age. So I think it's going to be a really interesting experience and um, definitely really excited for the next part of this journey. So um, that's it for now. I just wanted to share the match results and share the data from the match because I think that's also really interesting and definitely helpful. Like even the amount of schools you should apply to perhaps would be advisable to do more than I did. Um, but overall, I know that it's pretty, it's pretty rare or pretty, um, I'm, I'm very grateful to have matched on my first cycle and especially right out of undergrad as well. So I'm so excited to be able to say that I did finally match. And I think that luckily that will give some, some extra credibility to the, the f videos I've been making and just to the advice that I give. I definitely have shied away from giving too much advice on specifics of my applications uh, prior to the match because without credibility of being a matched applicant, I feel like it would be inadvisable to, to give any kind of um, information about, you know, how to write a personal statement, how to make your CV, how to, like things like that. Some of them, some advice is obviously warranted, like doing a crisis text line or using this resource or, or something like that. But in terms of the actual application materials, I really wanted to wait till I matched until I shared those details. But as the next cycle rolls around, maybe even beginning in the summer, I'm definitely gonna make some videos now about what I did 
because clearly there is um, some evidence that it was successful. So uh, stay tuned for that in a couple months from now, probably uh, in terms of application materials and the interview process and preparation for those kind of things. So those will be coming as well as uh, documentation of beginning the graduate program. So really excited to share that news. And other than that, I will see you in the next video.